it's great uh, still discovering new races and uh, the Arctic race of Norway is, is definitely one of those. I'm going to do one more season, so next year will uh, most likely be my, my last season of, of racing. Yeah, I, I'm enjoying being, being part of the team and being, having that role of sharing my experience with them. I'm excited to be here, back in the north of Norway, and I have some good results uh, previous years. Christoph takes the win in Alta, in front of his home crowd. I hope I can uh, win the stage or two again, so, and we have also a really strong squad uh, for the whole race in general, so yeah, at least I think we are going to be able to fight for, for the stages every day. Four seconds between Calzoni and the chasing back. Heartbreak for Calzoni, caught in the last 250 metres. When I lose uh, just for one second, uh, I think uh, immediately, OK, I have to, to try to win this race uh, next year. I prepare really well uh, this race and uh, we will see what uh, will happen. Strong field, uh, good teams, uh, so I think it's going to be an exciting race. Uh, a lot of, uh, as we see every year in uh, Arctic Race, always a lot of moves, attacks, uh, fast. Uh, not that controlled because it's less, less teams and also less riders, so uh, oh, I'm excited. Time then to go racing. A special day laying ahead, especially for the tough sprinters. And you had to be. Boda, a farewell to them. But staying, of course, above the Arctic Circle, exactly where we want to play. <laughs> Destination at Rognard, 155 and more kilometers along the way. And five brave souls decided that they were going to be in the breakaway. Well, with the King of the Mountains peacock jersey up for grabs, this had to be the place to be, but the margins were very modest, kept well within range, despite the fact that they were off up the road after just five kilometers, they never really got more than two minutes away from the gang who was on their tail. Spectacular scenery along the way, it's a characteristic of this race, illuminated by good weather this year. It's a beautiful race. It's also extremely tough. Well, our breakaway shared the spoils from the first intermediate sprint. And those climbs, of course, it's not just about mountain goats. It's about how you deliver it. And there's a battle raging, even amongst our breakaway. It couldn't really decide on cohesion. And the chase just kept them on a short leash. There was time out there. Time had to be garnered, and indeed points as well. They had to be fought for. It was busy. Mitegi, one of those who was extremely busy, along with Inkorn, but none more determined, I think, out there than Jella Joanink. Even when the break started to lose its heart, he kept his. It was a phenomenal performance. Then Faunia took over from his teammate Kvam, who'd been up front. And all it did was act like a red flag to a ball. And the big balls, they were coming through to take their own bonus seconds. The final intermediate sprint had some big names. Magnus Court taking it ahead of Schmidt. And indeed, the very impressive remark. Well, the foldovers were happening. There were still more points to be taken. And up again came Johannig, guaranteeing that amazing jersey. One of the most beautiful in cycling. And we were heading for the drama of a finale. This was Johannig who said, you know what? Peacock jerseys look great on me and I'm going to have this one. Nobody could stop him in his determination to pull on a jersey at the end of the day. Such a brave man. And so an amazing downhill roller coaster, a run to a grand finale. And then they've got to head for home. In fact, they've just dealt with it. It was the Hornings at the side of the road. 
and the meters start to count down here, don't they? There's a bit of shoulderage going on as well. Max Cantor in the frame, and we've got a flyer here coming up uh, uh, down the, the side wing, if you like, coming in uh, a, a rocket ship. That's Emilian Janier, I believe, from Total Energies. Got a lead out with him. I think it's Pierre Latour is going to try and guide him. Oh, Shoulderage getting involved here as well. And have they flown the coupe? Is this going to be a runaway for a solo? They can see them now. Suddenly they open up. Now then, this is the big dig. Who's working for who? And it's Court working for Christophe. Court working for Christophe. Chenier's on his case as well. Christophe releases. Chenier's coming up on the outside. He's on the horn. He's figured to take. Christophe shuts him down. He's going to throw it. Oh, that was brilliant. Alexander Christophe sets the planet alight. Well, it just goes to prove you can teach an old dog new tricks again and again and again. It was a bit uh, hard in the climb, but I knew uh, from training I uh, should survive it because I saw the power was less than what I did home, so uh, I knew I could do it. But uh, I felt the team brought me in a really good spot uh, coming into the last few hundred meters, and uh, I could wait and wait and uh, start, uh, I think, just at the right time. There was some guys coming a little bit on the side, but I felt it was uh, under control. <laughs> All hail the Viking. What a guy. Christoph at 37 years of age, showing the young guns the way home. Brilliant. And in so doing, he goes into the Midnight Sun leader's jersey, heading the race by a margin of just four seconds for now. Well, the win came. Indeed, the yellow jersey and also the points jersey, naturally enough, for the man who took the opening day. But the peacock of the day, ah, this man, how brave was he? Johan Inc. dominating with an eight-point lead on 12 for now. And where there are old dogs, there are young guns likewise. The coveted white jersey, Fuerta, in charge for now. What a day, what a Viking, what a race.